guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl kms if you're new here a very warm welcome to you if you are returning welcome back girl to all my new subscribers i really hope you do subscribe and become a part of my family i don't know why i feel so nervous i feel so nervous actually doing this voiceover but i think it's just because um you know you know sharing a part of your personal life isn't always so easy especially something as like important as what i'm about to share with you guys right now a lot of you guys may know the story already but in this video i will be speaking as though you don't know the story so just bear with me if you do just to get a few things out of the way um i am gonna be doing a hair install on this hair from amanda hair this video was sponsored by amanda hair so thank you so much for um, amanda hair for sponsoring this video just a few things on this hair this hair came in 24 inches however the closure was 14 inches if i'm not mistaken so i didn't really like the fact that the closure was a lot shorter than the hair because for me um you could sort of see and i i didn't really enjoy that i do like my closures just the same length as um the hair i think it works for short um straight hair but i don't think it works for for curly hair so what i did do is i cut this hair as well also something to note this hair does not come um bleached the knots aren't bleached it is a bit customized but i obviously had to go in and customize it just a little bit further just to give off that natural illusion as you can see i did leave the bleach on for a bit longer than i should have but it's not such a train smash um it's okay i mean i've worn this hair i think i really like that whole you know short curly hair vibe i think it's really really nice and i also think it's versatile because you can comb out the combs the the curls <laughs> if you follow me on instagram you would have seen that that's what i did um after having filmed this video um and yeah i'm not gonna really talk too much about what i'm actually doing in the video i will list all of the products in the description box so if there's something that you need it will be listed just in the order and in which um, they appear in the video so first things first for those that don't know me, I am Kay Nganyama. Well, my full name is Ketogutle Nganyama. I'm from Durban initially. And so, I don't know where to start, really. I think, let me just start at the point where I was in high school. And I didn't really know what to do. Like, I didn't know what I was going to study. You know, I've never really been the smartest person. But I, I, I've always known that, you know, I have it in me to work hard and so in my matric year um that's exactly what i did i really just you know set my mind to doing really well and achieving like really great marks because initially i really did want to get into vids which i did the reason why i actually wanted to get into vids was because was because um my ex-boyfriend which was like the ultimate love of my life was in uj and so I thought that it made sense for me to, you know, come and join him up in Joburg. But I mean, obviously, study as well. Funny thing is, we broke up in my matric year. So it didn't really work out the way in which I'd planned. But fortunately enough, I had really worked hard in order. I'd really worked hard enough to secure um, a place at Vitz into accounting science now i did not know i'd applied for accounting science because that is like a really hard degree to get into and so when i you know i kept seeing this xi on my portal when i like go and check my application status i was so nervous like will i actually be able to you know achieve the marks required for me to get into that degree and so I worked my butt off. And um, yeah, so anyway, eventually I did get into the degree. And fortunately, thank God, I got, you know, a few bursaries and, you know, everything seemed to be set. And for me, that sort of was a confirmation that, you know, I'm on the right path and this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Even though I didn't really have an interest in accounting, but I knew that um, being a chartered accountant was something a chartered accountant was something that would sort of 
set me straight and sort of you know make me live comfortably which is something that you know i've always wanted i don't really come from um a well-off family um you know i come from single parent household my mom's a teacher and so for me i i I didn't really have a choice like i've always known that i didn't really have a choice in terms of whether i'm successful or not i just knew that i had to be but at the same time i knew i knew that i was like special a little bit you know to a point where i'd call myself the golden girl Anyway, fast forward, um, I eventually packed my bags, left Durban and went to Joburg. And when I arrived in Joburg, you know, things were fun. It was great. Um, I lived in Rez as well. Getting into Rez wasn't like an easy thing back then. I don't know how it works now. But again, it was really just based off of um, your academics. You did have to um, qualify to get into Rez, just like you qualified to get into um the certain degree that you've chosen so fortunately enough i qualified to get into res and i found that that was really helpful because i mean you know you're surrounded by so many people that are doing the same thing so it's it's easy it's easy to um not really realize at first hand that you know what you're doing isn't really what's for you so the first couple of years in university it was sort of easy i made a few friends it was fine you know but i'd always felt like just detached i didn't feel like i was where i was supposed to be and you know you know being that young for me i didn't really i couldn't really put my finger on it because as well when you're in university there's a lot of distractions you're going out you're drinking you know you have all of this freedom but at the same time no one's really um, no one really cares, so you just have to, you you really just have to do everything on your own. So a, a, a huge part of it felt like, you know, am I really not doing well in school because I suck or because of like this newly found freedom? But um, yeah, anyway, long story short, after a few years, um, after two years, like my grades started dropping like just drastically. And then um, the next year, I moved out of res and I started living off campus. Now, living off campus was a bit challenging just because it's not so convenient to get to class. It's not as convenient to, um, you know, go to the library in the AMs or late at night and stuff, which is obviously what, you know, what I was used to. Um, But at the same time, it sort of gives you a lot of time to just think and connect with other people who are outside of what you're doing and that's exactly what happened to me um i sort of you know knew at that point that i don't really like what i'm doing but at the same time i don't really i don't know what else i want to be doing so i can't really change my degree which was what a lot of people were doing um so i just continued with it but you know i kept saying to my friends and i was just like you know i I don't really like what i'm doing i hate it here and they're like oh no babe you know you'll do better next time and i'm just like the thing is i don't really want to do better you know and for me if i don't want to do something then i just don't do it so um fast forward i'm out of um i'm out of res i'm living off campus you know i'm interacting with the few people that are off campus that don't go to vids freelancing and things like that until eventually i met um cedric i'm sure you guys know him um everyday people stories and obviously cedric is a photographer and he's a creative so i met him and a few and uh, a few of his friends some of his friends had like um this sort of boutique store like a clothing store in where was this place in newtown yeah newtown and we chill there sometimes and you know it really intrigued me that like people were out here just following their passions okay before i moved out of res i discovered a passion in makeup i guess i've always been someone that's um really just interested in beauty um and for me i just thought it was because like i didn't really have any sisters and you know i'm surrounded by like a whole lot of boys i've got two younger brothers and just male cousins and i don't really have like a lot of females around me um except for my mom and my mom's not really into like anything beauty like that but then obviously moving into res i'm living in an all girls um res and i am seeing how 
every single time I change my hair, it sparks an interest. You know, if I get my brows threaded, it, sp- it sparks an interest. So I really, really became drawn to um, just beauty and what it does for um, just women in general. Like how, you know, something like doing your hair or... Um, threading your brows we weren't really doing makeup at that time but like just how it made such a huge difference to your confidence and how everyone you know got so excited about it until eventually i started you know viewing some few videos on youtube in the labs when i was meant to be studying so i'd watch youtube videos and i'd be like oh my god you know they're so talented when will i ever i don't even have like the product i don't have anything and then um I think I got like money from somewhere. I think it was my bursary. I got like 2,000 rands and um, I bought like my first makeup kit. You know, it was a small kit. Um, and then I called my friends and I just, you know, do makeup on them. And I started a, um, a, a page on Instagram, Sex Beauty. Um, and yeah, I just post them there. But I sort of got like embarrassed a little bit because I was just like, oh my God, this is nowhere near where I want to be. And I'm like, oh, child, let me delete this because it is embarrassing. Like it was so embarrassing. But um, so that was something that I really liked. And but it was still at the back of my head anyway back to um meeting cedric and his friends and so um, you know i'm speaking to cedric and he's like oh you know you're so beautiful and he took a couple of photos of me and at the time i didn't really even believe i was beautiful i was just like mm, child you'd be lying you know and stuff but like he really like said it and he seemed like he meant it and you know he helped me sort of curate my instagram like he deleted all my random photos like i had random photos of everything i take photos of everything literally everything and anything and he's just like what is this doing on your pe on your feed what does this say about you and so i was just like oh i don't know so i was just like "Mm, well i don't really know i mean i like the photo i think it's a nice photo and um i remember him and his friend Debojo literally sat down and deleted almost all of my photos on instagram and i was just like well damn you know so then i started paying a little bit more attention to my instagram i started um taking you know nicer photos and stuff and i'd always send them to him and be like oh do you like this it was nice and he was like yeah 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 it's really really nice um and then i really got into that brum space like uh one of my friends was working at a store in Brum Anatomy and she was like really into fashion and just you know sneakers and everything like creative and stuff and for me like the only thing I had known really was just school and accounting and you know maths and stuff so seeing that really you know intrigued me and um it really made me feel like I can be and I remember this one day we were at anatomy with my friend um, that was working there and she's like yeah so like what do you want to do essentially and I'm just like yeah you know I just want to be a makeup artist like I know it sounds kind of weird but you know I really I really just want to be like a dope ass makeup artist like I want to be one of the best in the country and she was just like wow that's so amazing and I'm just like yeah like I can't believe I even said it you know because at the time it seemed so far-fetched I didn't have anything but um that's that's I knew that's where I wanted to to be at that point I still didn't think that it was something that I could make a living out of to a point where I could like drop out of school and do that so anyway you know months went by and um I just found myself like just deeper and deeper in um some sort of depression I didn't know it was depression at the time but I knew that I was like extremely unhappy and I knew that I felt so lifeless I didn't feel like I was where I needed to be every day was just you know walking and just I was just walking around and just going through the motions like I was just aimlessly walking through life and I knew that there had to be more to life than that like that's something that I knew so deep in my heart that if I died today or tomorrow I would be so unhappy because I felt like I was not where I was supposed to be 
and a few months weeks down the line you know that feeling got really you know stronger and stronger and stronger until until i got to a point where i just i couldn't take it anymore and i got to a point where i was so depressed i wasn't leaving my room i wasn't leaving um yeah i wasn't leaving my room first of all let alone the apartment building um let alone the building and i just stay in my room and i you know close the curtains i keep the clo- curtains closed i wasn't really eating i just stay in darkness and i found that that's what i wanted like to do because that's how i felt and one night it just got so overwhelming that you know i like i was low key suicidal those couple of weeks i i i would, like i honestly just wanted to end my life because I, I've never felt so empty. I really felt empty and I felt like I was in this deep dark hole that no one could get me out of, but I just wanted to go home. And so I called my mom and my mom was just like, "What is going on?" because I called at like 3 a.m. one night and she was just like, "What is happening with you?" And I'm just like, "I don't know. Like I just I just can't do this anymore." And you know, the only reason why I actually still even am alive or still want to be alive is because I just know that it would it would hurt you so much to lose me. But I don't feel, I don't feel, I don't feel alive, you know, even though I am alive. And she was just like, oh my God, you know, that's so terrible to hear. Come home. And so um, I did the next morning. I flew back to Durban and I just got home and I just cried, you know. She's like, what's going on? Is school hard? And I'm like, yeah, I get school being hard. But at the same time, I don't want to do it. So I think there's that but at the same time i just don't want to do it anymore and i can't it seems like i can't let go of it because i don't know what what else i should be doing or what else i want to be doing and she was just like well i don't i don't know what's going on with you girl i don't know so she called my grand and obviously you know black people my grand thought like i was being bewitched like she took me to a sangoma and she was just like I don't know what's going on with this child. Can you sort it out? And um you, there was nothing wrong with me until I started seeking like medical attention. Like I went to my GP and he referred me to someone and I started seeing someone. So I was at home for about a few weeks. Um I was at home for about almost a month, but bear in mind this is also like a month where I'm supposed to be writing. Um just september tests i forgot what they called um so anyway i eventually went back to joburg because i was feeling a lot better and i thought that you know maybe i could give it another another try and um things will be okay and so i went back to joburg and um yeah i went back to school but then i realized that actually i really don't want to do this it, it's almost like i had the confidence i finally had the confidence to like just you know let it go um but at the same time i still didn't know what i wanted to do so um i stayed in joburg up until um my lease ended which was in december and so i started applying for just makeup jobs like i remember i applied for jobs at mac which i was declined and um eventually i got a job at a makeup studio in santon and that's what i was doing just after the school term um i remember everyone had gone home and i i stayed for as long as i could just as long as my lease ended and so i stayed in joburg and i was traveling to santon you know by taxi and i um going to my job which i found you know so much fulfillment i was so happy um i was working in a makeup studio and i was just doing makeup on um couples that come in for like couple shoots or family portraits or just anything like that so anyone that comes into studio we do the makeup and that's what i was doing and i was like so happy i felt alive i think for the first time and i realized that that was something that i liked even though when i when i was supposed to get paid they scammed me because I don't know child. I think they were just like a struggling company so they didn't really pay me but again I wasn't too hacked because I mean it was something that I really really enjoyed. 
so went back home and oh, this is such a long story child so i went back home and i then um the following year a friend of mine hit me up for just some work with the sabc and she was like you know if you get into this kind of work maybe you can you know finally get into makeup side of things and you could you know be doing makeup on sets and stuff in the, at the sabc which went horribly wrong horribly wrong because um the guy that was sort of mentoring us started like making advances on us and he was basically like if you don't sleep with me then you know you're not getting a job which was kind of weird and so i think that for me was just like a let me just go home and go back to the drawing board so i was at home for a few months and i was just chilling there it was kind of like depressing a little bit but i i felt so much better because i knew that i was here to find what it is i'm supposed to be doing i had so much hope in the midst of like absolutely nothing nothing was happening for me but i was so hopeful that god knows me and god will position me um wherever it, wherever it is that i need to be and so you know, i went on a few fasts and stuff and it's actually the funniest thing because while i was at home i obviously now had dropped out of school and i was just chilling bumming at home not really doing much and was, there's a lot um i could speak about about being at home and just in that period but for the purposes of this video i won't um so eventually um because i'm at home i like i started you know pretending to be doing stuff like i you know get up and i do my makeup just in the mornings or just during the day and i take photos and i just pretend to be going somewhere just so like my friends and everyone else who were on social media didn't think that i was just like dead <laughs> you know so i pretended to have a life and it's crazy because in my pretense um that's when i finally got approached by like brands and stuff and i realized that the more i posted about like my makeup and what i'm doing and you know plugging people was the more people got interested and i realized my my following on instagram just started growing and i was just like oh okay something's working so i started doing it a lot more often and i remember when i got to 10,000 followers on my instagram i sort of just switched it up and i was just like hey guys well if you follow me this is now a makeup page and that's what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be plugging you and um yeah so welcome to the community and yeah literally from there it has just been uh apple literally it has been up uphill i've just gotten so many opportunities and yeah that is basically how i became and how i started my influencer journey and there's a lot of that there's a lot that happened between then and where i am now maybe we can get into that in the next makeup therapy video but yeah that's a bit about my background and um some of the reasons why i ended up dropping out and yeah if you do like this video please give it a huge thumbs up and i will see you in my next video Bye. I'm sorry for the burden, sorry I was hurting, but my scars are almost healed. Yeah, my scars are almost healed. Yeah, I'm feeling like a child now, everything's alright now, and it's all because of you. You made the flower in me bloom.